Okay, and we're back again. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk a little bit more about the viewports, kind of a last go around for the viewport controls that at this point may be giving you some trouble. It's pretty no normal for new students to have some trouble with the viewport and kind of getting your legs and moving around these, these odd viewport things that we've talked about. I find it's the most common problem students have in the first uh, week or so of using the program is they just don't quite know what they're looking at. I mean, it is kind of a weird concept when you think about it. We're building something in, on a 2D screen that really is 3D axis and we can move it around, but we have to deal with these 2D looking viewports. So sometimes you can get stuff that sort of looks right in the viewport, but really isn't right. So um, I've configured my viewports a little bit differently than what you've seen in the past here. This uh, scene, if you'd like to use it, is available with the material that you have access to. It's uh, 106 is the name of the scene. And what I've done here is I've right clicked on each viewport this time. And remember, you you left click in the viewport to select it. I'm right clicking on the word up here that says realistic in my case. Yours probably says something like shaded. And I've changed it to realistic. That's also shift F3 if you want to use that. Here are the other choices that I have. So shaded, consistent colors, oops, oops, whoops, whoops, <laughs> and edged faces. Um, so I'm going to use something like realistic. We've done realistic with edged faces. So in this case, I'm going to switch each of these to realistic with edged faces. Now you don't have to use this particular setting, the realistic edged faces. And you're going to see in the files that I've set up for you, usually the perspective is only set up in realistic edged faces mode. The rest are in wireframe. That's because for the most part, I'm going to be working in perspective view. And here we are back in perspective view. So a few other things that are going to make life a little bit easier for you. If you're finding that the objects are really kind of moving all over the place. So for instance, if I move this over here on purpose, when I move the scene around, see how that tank's kind of flying all over the place and sometimes he gets lost? That's because your tank isn't in the center of the scene. I say your tank, the object here in the scene. How about any object that you use? Isn't in the center of the scene. There's an easy way around that and what you can do is you could select an object, come down here to your orbit, tool and you could use these different orbiting tools. You'll see there's one that's all white, one that's all green, and one that's partially green and white. And if you play around with those you'll see the green and white orbit tool down here is rotating the viewport around the center of my scene. So in, in, in other words if I move this guy over and rotate around see how really not helping me too much move our tank back over here. If I use the green one, it's doing something similar. So for instance, if I move this guy over to the side here and move it, you can see it's doing something similar, but it's basically orbiting around that selected object. That's a little bit better way to work in most cases because you're just you're not going to have your objects flying all over the screen at least they'll stay centered in orbit around an object so you can basically select something like this and then orbit around it and you've got your orbiting around that guy the other one the white one here the white one is going to orbit around a different space in your viewport and it's not quite as helpful so usually you're going to see me have it set on the uh green one here so that I can orbit around that little piece that's selected and that is the white and green one down under orbit sub object makes life a little bit easier for you also remember alt and the middle mouse button or mouse wheel if you hold down will do the orbiting for you you don't have to go down to the button so if you see me orbiting and I'm not clicking on the button that's why I'm using the mouse wheel 
A couple other things that are going to help you. Let me get my little object here centered a little bit better. The zoom extents button, this one, is going to zoom into the area that you're working on or that you want centered. So for instance, if my tank, I always say my tank, if my object gets moved way over there and I hit zoom extent, you'll see it zips right over. So for instance, if I was to keep zooming and I lose my object and I don't know where it is, I can hit that white zoom extents box right there and it'll zoom right in. The green one is going to zoom into the selected area, which is also very helpful. So if I click this little canister down here and hit the green one, see I can zoom right into that and then I can go from the green cube to the white cube down here in the bottom right and I can zoom back out. So it makes maneuvering around the viewports much more easy. Okay, we've talked about orbiting or rot rotating your viewports to get a better view, but here's what happens with a lot of these scenes early on as students are learning. We've talked about move, and move makes a lot of sense. It's not that big of a deal, but Inevitably what happens is we get where we're selecting the whole object and we start rotating the whole object. So something like this, student rotates the object to look around. Well, what we're doing there, if we jump back out to our mini viewports, you can see here that I've now basically rotated my object out of alignment with all my viewports. And this is going to be very hard to work with in the future. So you should be in the habit of kind of zipping out to your four viewports. Just make sure they're all aligned. So it should look like something like, I'm going to use, un, I'm using my undo button up here. It should look something like that. See how everything's nicely aligned. I think that's as far back as I went. Yeah. And that would keep everything nice and straight. We want those those three axes to be to be all nice and straight. So don't rotate the view with the select and rotate button. Only use the middle mouse button with alt like that or these buttons down here to do that. That'll keep everything nice and straight in your scene. Okay, the only other thing I want to cover in this video is just keeping the, the scenes nice and neat, and that's using the hide and unhide tools. If I right click on any one object in my scene, I can right click again, and I'm really looking at these four right here. I can hide that selection. So I can hide everything in my scene, and then I can unhide all, or I can unhide by name. And you see if I unhide by name, here's all the objects that were in my scene. By the way, this same menu is right there. So if I close this, I can go to this menu, select by name, the same menu. See there's nothing showing because everything's hidden. I can unhide all. You can see I even have some stuff in the scene that's packed in there for you to see that was hidden. You didn't see this before. some other objects in there. So I can right click on that and say hide selection. Hidden selections will export out to video games so eventually you've got to um, clean them all up but that's easy enough to do. Just select them and delete them. And now I think we got all of them. Yeah, I think we did. All the little junk is out of our scene and now you know how to right click on your viewport Use these guys, unhide by name, unhide all, hide unselected, which is basically the opposite of hide selected. Usually what I do is I come in here, I select the object I want to work on, uh, hide unselected, work on my object, right click, and say unhide all. So that will let you move around your scene a little bit better. So review those viewport controls down here in the bottom right. We've covered all of them at this point. And moving around in the viewport should be a little bit easier for you. If you get tripped up, don't worry about it. It happens to everybody. This 3D stuff can be a little bit unnerving at first, getting in used to it. But I'm sure you'll do fine. So give it some practice. Let me know if you run into any problems, but that should answer all the normal questions that we usually get. 
I'll see you in the next video. Bye.